announcements share with you, and they are in your bulletin. Um, today, as after worship, um, you're invited. I hope that you'll join us downstairs for some coffee, for time of fellowship, and uh, some really good treats that are down there. Um, because, you know, we're going into Thanksgiving, so we have to start with an abundance of food. And that will continue through the next, I don't know, year? Because we're Fair Street, friends. And um, so hopefully you'll join us for some coffee and a time of fellowship. But also one of the things that we're going to be doing up here in um, the sanctuary is we're going to start hanging of the greens, which means that if um, you can stick around for a little bit, just mostly, most importantly, to help us get all of the big, awkward, heavy, bulky items from the balconies down here, so that we can decorate and get the space ready for Advent and Christmas season. We would love your, your um, energy and your young working legs. Um, let me think. Advent, um, Advent starts next week. And so the first Sunday of Advent, we are going to um, continue the tradition of food and after worship, we're going to have a light soup luncheon. And so I hope that you do join us for next week and stay for soup. And then also that's when we're going to be um, assembling our Advent wreaths. If you have not signed up for an Advent wreath yet, um, you can take all the items and take it home and make it at home as well. Um, but if you haven't signed up and you would like an Advent wreath um, in an Advent kit, can you please call the church office, I think, by tomorrow would be great and let Megan know. So just so we can make sure that we have enough kits and everything um, for you. And then last two, it's Thanksgiving on Thursday. And some of some folks might be hosting Thanksgiving and some might need an extra card table for all of the desserts that you're making, right? You're like, no, but yes, you might. So downstairs in the parish room, over by the piano in the corner, you're going to see um, leaning against the wall, what, five? Five or six brown card tables. If you need a card table and would like one of these, it is our gift to you to take it home with you. That means you don't have to, please don't bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> that also means that we pulled it out of the dungeon this past week and it did not get clean. So you'll have to take it home today to clean it in order for it to be ready for food on Thursday. But anyway, if you need a card table, they're downstairs, the brown ones only, please. Um, we would love to, to create more space in your house for more food. Um, uh, over Thanksgiving. And then finally, as you walked in the narthex, maybe you saw this little Christmas tree with all the gift tags on. That is our mission of the month for November and December, um, where we, we are doing Ulster Christmas wishes. And so we have been designated and um, assigned a family within Ulster County, and each family member has created um, a wish list. And all of those items on the wish list are on these little tags. And so what we want, what the missions team would like to invite you all to do is to stop out there and pick up one or two if you can, but one um, Christmas tag, Christmas wish tag, and then go shopping to purchase the item that's on that tag for that um, child or parent in the home. And then remind me again, December 8th. Two weeks from today, December 8, is when all of the, the gifts unwrapped with the tag come back. So you have two weeks to go shopping. And, um, and then you can bring those gifts back unwrapped with that tag taped to the gift. Is that a good idea? Um, and then just bring it back by December 8. And then Sharon and Linda Brown, on behalf of the church and the missions team, will be delivering all of these items and all of the gifts um, so that they can make their way to the family so the family has gifts to open on Christmas morning. 
So that is our mission of the month. We are very excited and we hope that um, we'll be, you'll be able to join us in making somebody's Christmas very special. Phew, with that, friends, people of God, the rest of the stuff is in the bulletin and will be in the weekly email that comes out tomorrow. I encourage you to take a look and see how you can be engaged in the life and ministry here at Fair Street in the weeks and months to come. But as we gather, maybe this is your first time worshiping with us, or maybe you have been here all along. Regardless of who you are, where you live, who you love, the color of your skin, the language that you speak, or however it is that you get around, or whatever it is that you think might hinder you from belonging and being in this place, please know and believe that your presence is a gift. And we are grateful to God that you are here with us in these moments. And maybe, as we gather, your week has been one that has been filled with chaos and uncertainty or grief and sorrow, or maybe it's been filled with joy and celebration. Regardless of whatever it is that your week has held, this is the time and the space where we can pause and hopefully just set aside the chaos of the world and the chaos of our lives for just a split second so that we can place all the stuff in God's hands and in God's care, and we can trust God to hold it while we worship and while we prepare to hear God's word. And, and so as we do that, we can let go of all of the things, and we can just exhale it out and breathe in God's love and in God's light and in God's presence letting go of everything else. And we do that each week as we take that breath in. So I'm going to invite you to join me as we breathe in, breathing in God's love, in God's grace, and in God's welcome, and breathe out and letting go of all the stuff that we've been holding on to all week long. And as we breathe in, we also receive God's greeting this morning. Grace and peace be to you from the one who is, who was, and is to come. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to stand as you are able to join Sharon in the call to worship, but also as you stand, maybe turn to your neighbor and greet one another with the peace of Christ this morning. Peace be with you. Please join me in the call to worship found in your bulletins. It is the last Sunday of the church year. We have journeyed together through, the, through a plethora of stories but it always, it always ends up that gives completely of itself. This is the reigning Christ the Savior King. It is here that we gather Please join me in the opening number 148. Come, thou almighty king.
You may be seated. And I'm going to invite the children to come on up. Miss Leslie has a word for you this morning. And big brothers are welcome to come up too. So good morning. Oh, that wasn't a really big good morning, but that's okay. So I'm actually going to talk about a couple of little things this morning. But my first question is, what happens later this week? Thanksgiving. So when you guys sit down at the Thanksgiving table, do you go around the table and everybody says something that they're thankful for? All right, so what are you going to say you're thankful for? Anybody? What do you want? What are you thankful for on Thanksgiving? How about <laughs> Pastor Kendra? Yeah, Thanksgiving break. That was a good one. How about do any of you say you're thankful for some of the food that's at the table? Yeah, no. Or maybe you say you're thankful for family, family or friends. Yeah. Well, Thanksgiving usually it started out as being thankful for the food that was able to be grown and collected during the year so that they had enough food at the table to eat that day, but also to eat for the rest of the year. It was really mere think, thanking God for a good harvest and the food that he provided for them, right? But we have a lot more than just food to be thankful for, don't we? So one of the things that we can be thankful for every single day is that we got up to a new day, right? Every single morning, we have a new day, a new day to do things, to have fun, to love our families, to have food. And every day, we have a good morning. And every day, we also have God's love. So I have a stack of cards in my hand. And there's probably about 200 of them in this stack. If I was to give each one of you a card that told you that God is always giving you a new day, a good morning, and his love, and I wanted to give you one of these every single day. How many cards would I need for a year? 365. And I would need another 365 next year, and the year after that, and the year after that. And if I did that for everybody in the church, probably within a few years, we'd fill the church with cards, wouldn't we? Well, think about how many cards God would need to give everybody a card, everybody in the world a card, every morning for every year of their life. Millions and billions, and even trillions of cards, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each of you one of these cards today. I'm going to give you one. You can give it to your brother when you get back there. And on one side it says, God is always giving you a new day, a good morning, and his love. And on the back of the card, it's a little prayer. And it says, thank you, God, for this new day, this good morning, and your love. And thank you for, and then there's a space. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do and encourage you to do is God loves it when we talk to him, even if it's only for a few seconds every day. So what I'm going to tell you guys to do is take this card and put it somewhere where you will see it every day on the bathroom mirror or on the table next to your bed or even on the door that you go out every day so you can see it and take just three or four seconds every morning just to whisper to God, thank you, God, for this new day, 
for this good morning and for your love. And thank you for, and pick one thing that day that you're thankful for, and thank God. A card for you. And one for your brother. And a card for you. And a card for you. And let us pray. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for every day. For a new day, for a good morning, for the love you hand us every morning and share with us every day, and for all the gifts that you have given us that we have in our lives. Help us every morning to take just a few seconds to remember and be thankful for all we have and to whisper to you, thank you, God, for everything. Amen. Great. You guys can go back to your seat. Children, worship and wonder. And we'll see you afterwards. Thanks. Hear this call to confession. Jesus challenged those who thought the old ways were the only ways. He exposed the limited vision of religious leaders and stretched the perceptions of men and women who became disciples. Christ comes to know us now, breaking into our self-protective routines. Our timidity conquered and our temptations to arrogance are confronted. We are invited to face ourselves honestly in a dialogue with our Creator as we pray prayer of confession together. Compassionate God, for whom we fill our lives with empty earthly things, for when we do things that we know we should not do, but for when we do not do things that we know we should, and for all the way we bring to you now in silence. Forgive us and make us new. Remind us again and again that it is through Jesus we are made new, forgiven, restored, and free. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Hear the good news God delights in us in spite of our mistakes and misjudgments. With steadfast love, God turns us from Dead works in to a living faith. Through Christ, we are saved and welcomed into a new covenant. Redeemed from our transgressions, we are promised an eternal inheritance. We are commissioned once again to carry light to the nations. Let us carry this light with gratitude as we go forward, living accordingly to how we are called to live. And the guide for grateful living, hear the teachings of Christ, a new commandment I give to you, that, that you, you love, love one another, another just, just as, as I have loved you. you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, we seek your light amid the gloom of our lives and the world. Yet it is much easier to take refuge in the shadow of your wings than to stand exposed in the light. It seems safer to stay in the prisons we have made or accepted for ourselves than to risk passage through the open doors of the freedom you offer. 
So call us into the warmth of your light where your acceptance and empowerment may be fully known. May your word be that light and love shining into our lives. We give this time and space to you and all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading this morning comes from two different passages. First from the gospel according to John reading from chapter three verses 11 to 21, and then the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament from chapter 42, the first 10 verses. So as I mentioned, today we wrap up the year, and with Advent just being a week away, we get, we get to get ready for the new year to begin. The Advent um, begins the church calendar year, so it's appropriate that we wrap up the year with what the church calls Christ the King Sunday. Christ the King Sunday is a day in which the church sets and turns their focus on Christ. So the fact that while we prepare to observe and celebrate Christmas, that Jesus came to earth in human form, today we recall and remember that Jesus was not only fully human, but was also fully God, coming to serve as King of our lives. So today reminds us of why Christ the King of our lives, fully God and fully human, came to earth to bring love and light into the world. So our gospel reading holds probably the most popular and well-known verse in all of scripture. And while the words of the prophet are not only a reminder of what Christ would be coming to do, but also a reminder of some of what we can do and should do to exemplify as we share the light and love of Christ in this world. So following the readings this morning, you're invited to stand as you are able to join in singing of our hymn of preparation number 61, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. But first, hear these words from the prophet Isaiah and then the gospel according to John. Isaiah 42, 1 to 10. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to the, those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I've given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. And then John 3, the Gospel of John, verses 11 to 21. This is Jesus speaking. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have 
eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a whiteness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. There is well. may be seated. Just a disclaimer, there is a lot in those verses. We're only going to be touching just a surface of it this morning. So stay tuned, there might be more. But imagine if each week we showed up here each week and we said, everyone with glasses needs to sit over here. And if you're wearing a winter coat, would you please sit over here? And if you're wearing sandals, you're all the way in the back. And if you are wearing red, it would be best if you could sit here. And well, the rest of you, we don't know what to do with you, right? Imagine if we did this. And so what would happen is then the next week, somebody would be like, hey, I got contacts, so I don't have to sit over here, right? I can't see without them. But then what happens is we change the rules, and we're like, no, we're not doing that one today. Anybody who has contacts now have to sit over here. And we begin to com compartmentalize, and we begin to see only the things that are different about us. And we see how people looked and how they showed up. And we say, because of this, you have to sit over here or back there. And we only focus on what separates us. Friends, people of God, our gospel reading this morning gives clear indication 
that God's love and light that comes to the world through Jesus Christ is for everybody. Not only the people who look like us, think like us, act like us, talk like us, vote like us, love like us. It's everybody. Jesus came for the entire world to bring God's love and light into the world. Not just Kingston or McBain or Denver or Canada or South Africa. The entire world. All of it. And further, we read in verse 17 that God did not send Jesus into the world to what? Condemn the world, but to bring love and light. Did you hear that? God is not a God of condemnation, but of grace and love and light. So often we read this passage and we fixate on this one verse. Did you hear the one verse? Any guess? For God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will have eternal life and not perish. But what we hear and we think is, well, God loves me. And everyone else who thinks or looks and lives like me and no one else matters. Unless they change their mind and their ways, they will be deemed rubbish and they will go back to compartmentalizing people. Okay, so maybe that sounds a bit dramatic, but I'm not convinced it's far off. Because we often forget that it is our mandate to go and make disciples and proclaim the gospel. And that means not just staying within our comfort zone and where it's easy to stay. So in 2009, after two decades of being absent at sporting events, do you know what resurfaced? Some of you might remember from Bible study. The infamous sign at football events, football games and sporting events, you would always see, it started resurfaced in 2009, right? Where you would always see one person. And that's all they'd do. Now, yes, this is the most popular verse, and many of us learned it when we were knee-high to a grasshopper, right? Like, we were young, and that was one of the first verses. Now, I don't know why, right? I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I don't think that somebody stands here like this in hope that their team will win and be saved. I'm actually going to go out on a limb and say, they remember that their mandate is to proclaim the gospel. And well, my friends, if I can proclaim the gospel to a million people without having to talk to anybody, that's a win, right? That's a win no matter which team wins. But yet, here's what happens. Do you know what happens when people see this? They don't read and hear about verse 17. They don't hear about that God is a God of love. What they hear is, you either believe or you're out. You either love or you're out. And then it's compartmentalizing. And then it's fire and brimstone. And then people walk away from hearing the gospel and they don't hear it. So when we proclaim the gospel with only words, and more importantly, when we preach the gospel only using one verse to make it easy to accommodate our gospel, there's no winning. There's no winning because, well, John 3.16 is a lovely verse and it is filled with life-giving meaning. We have to keep reading. 
we have to keep reading. Because when we proclaim the gospel, we don't get to just choose the parts that we like. But pastor, you said that the passage is one of love and welcome, so what's the problem? Like I said, people will hear eternal suffering, and they will hear condemnation, and they will hear a fire and brimstone message. But what they won't hear is verse 17, where it's confirmed that God is a God of love, that God is a God of light and of grace, because God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but to what? Love the world. And it's when we read these verses together that we are reminded that God sent Jesus to earth to bring love and grace, not judgment and wrath. This was Jesus' sole task to carrying out God's love for everyone. And further, when paired with the words from the prophet Isaiah, we read that Christ came to earth not only to bring love and light, but to protect the light from being snuffed out, to stand for justice, and to stand alongside the other. So if Jesus, who is king and fully God and fully human, came to the world to love and not condemn, what makes us think that we can judge and condemn one another? Our mandate and our call is what? To love. We proclaim it each day. Love your neighbor with no exceptions. So today, yes, Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the church calendar year, the Sunday prior to the first Sunday of Advent when we prepare for Christ's arrival, we recall that Jesus arrived in human form. But today we remember and recall Jesus being fully God, King of our lives, who brings love and light into the world to stand for justice as we read in Isaiah, to stand alongside and protect one, one's light from getting snuffed out, protecting it so darkness does not overcome it. And he does this as king being of God in human form. So we would get to witness this love and this light. So in a few days, many will gather around tables with friends and family to share a meal together. Some of you will say, that entire meal was so delicious. Others will say, yeah, it was good. My favorite, though, was the mashed potatoes. I could do without. You fill in the blank. The beauty of what we hear is that God doesn't break things up or break things out. God doesn't say, I love you best, but I could do without that person. Right? God doesn't say that. God loves the entire world and then goes one step further to say, whoever believes, meaning whoever believes, receives God's love and God's light. This means we don't get to say and proclaim the gospel to people that we choose because we agree with them or we like them. We might not think that the person over there belongs or even should belong or should believe or receive the same love and grace of God, but they do and they can. And out of this, when we remember why Jesus came into the world as fully God, fully human, to bring love and light into the world, when we focus on Jesus, our mission shifts just a bit. And we realize that we are now extension of, extensions of God's love and God's light. This, my friends, people of God, is our mandate and our call to be an extension of God's love and light, to bring hope, to bring peace, to share, to stand alongside the other, to walk with the ones who are weary, to bring light of God's love into the world 
and alongside the ones who are struggling. So over the past decade or so, it seems that the political landscape has been causing deep divisions in the country, in the church, and in families and friendships. And recently, it seems like it's only getting deeper and wider. We're afraid of what others will say or think about us, so we polarize ourselves and others because it's just easier. And again, in a few days, we're going to gather around table. Some will gather with laughter and joy. Others will be reserved and cautious and weary. Some will hold grief over missing a loved one who's not at the table or grief over whatever it is that's happening in their lives. And there will be folks who gather who will be able to talk openly and freely, freely about life and all the things while others will fight and yell because of their differences. Did I miss any? And then at the end of the day, when everyone leaves, there will be comments about how great the food was. It was such a lovely time. Thank you. Thank you for your hospitality. And then exit and think, oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> this is the landscape of what's happening and how people are living their lives these days. But as I read these verses, both from the gospel and the prophet, I wonder what would happen if we began to live out these verses, to begin to breathe and pray through these verses as we gather for worship, as we gather with friends and family, in our daily conversations. What do I mean? I wonder what it would look like if we returned to looking at one another and seeing each other as a beloved child of God, whom God loves and promises love and light, and allow this to bring us together. What if we begin to see one another as human beings who just want to belong, and we stop seeing the differences and what divides us? Now, while this seems simple, for some relationships it can be more challenging, but I'm talking about for the sake of the gospel. What if we see God's love as the one thing that unites us as the body of Christ? To send us out to live in the love and light of Christ, and to further share the light and love with the entire world. Christ the King Sunday reminds us of why we celebrate Christmas, that Christ is King and came to the earth for the purpose of sharing and living out God's love. So what if we spend the season focusing on Jesus? What if instead of focusing on what divides us, we look around and we see God's light and love that needs to be shared? And then we go there. And we share that light. And we bring a bit of Jesus into the world. What if instead of just holding up John 3.16, we live out God's abundant love? We live out God's abundant grace, and we stand alongside each other. And the ones who are having a hard time keeping their light shining, because Isaiah speaks of that, right, will not let lights be snuffed out. So we come alongside, and we bring the light to be alongside. Because where the light is, Darkness will not overcome it. So what does this look like? Well, maybe instead of avoiding someone, we walk up to them and say, hey, I've missed you. Can we have a cup of coffee? Maybe instead of looking at what divides us, we look for ways to come together to share in the work of Christ. And we find ways to say, you can sit wherever you want. Because we're just so thankful that you're here. Maybe instead of yelling or muttering under your breath about someone or something, we say, how can I support you? 
When we come together and we remember and begin to see one another as human beings once again, more importantly as beloved children of God, then we can come alongside one another to share in the work of the gospel. And we can begin to see the injustices of the world where lights are flickering and struggling to remain lit. And we can run with our light to stand alongside and say, you won't be in the dark, I'm here. I'll stand with you. Or maybe instead of holding up the sign that says this, we hold up the sign that says this. You're like, oh, Yvette, what does that mean? It says, God loves you. I'm sorry life is hard right now, but you don't have to go through it alone. Know that I'm here and I'm ready to stand with you because together, I can't read my writing upside down, Together, we can live and witness God's, witness God's love and God's light. And maybe we could just talk rather than me holding this stupid sign. Maybe instead of holding this, we actually say something like this. And then when we get to the bottom of it, we say, I don't even want to hold this sign. I want to be able to have a conversation and see how you're doing. Because together, when we share in community, we bring God's love and God's light into the world. And my friends, beloved people of God, darkness cannot overcome this light. For God so loved the world, the entire world, that he gave his one and only son so that everybody in the entire world could witness and experience God's love and God's light and God's grace and know that they're welcome, whoever they are, wherever they live, whatever they look like, whoever they love, whatever language they speak. And for God's love and God's light, and the very fact that darkness can never overcome this light, we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. God, we thank you for the gift of your son. And we thank you that we can hold on to the light and love that you give and you bring. Help us to be agents to share your love and your light in this world. We give this journey to you and all God's people said, Amen. So friends, all of us have received the gift of life through no merit of our own. An eternal inheritance does await us. But as we feast on the abundance that God provides, we can give thanks for the opportunity to share in the ministry of healing and of peace and of hope and of light and love. And so our offerings make it possible for others to experience and witness this light and love, drinking deep from the rivers that God delights. And so I invite you as you are able to give back to God for the blessings that God gives us.
In your love and in your grace, O oh God, you create all and give all. So we give these gifts to you and we ask that you take the offerings we make of ourselves, our time, our talents, and our money and transform them and us into signs of light and love which show the way to your kingdom in and through your Son, our Savior and King. Amen. You may be seated. One of the ways in which we respond to hearing God's word is not only through our gifts and our offerings, but by being in prayer for and with and alongside one another. And um, so just two prayers to share with you this morning. Um, the first one is um, to be in prayer for an individual, Nathaniel, who is in the hospital and um, a friend of, of, of Fair Street. Um, a friend of a fair streeter, I should say, who's in the hospital suffering some uh, long-term effects of Crohn's and looking for answers. And so to be in prayer for Nathaniel is welcome. And then also um, Linda Brown um, was admitted into the hospital late Friday night. And um, so she is doing, she's doing okay and is hoping to be discharged either today or tomorrow. She was having some abdominal um, issues and uh, so just to be in prayer for Linda and for John um, and everything so that she can regain strength and go home she's looking forward to coming home and also very concerned and was very sad to not be here for hanging of the greens that was her worry so we can pray for Linda um, and uh, everything else I think my friends is in the bulletin it will also be in the weekly and um, we can just continue to lift each one up in a spirit of prayer, knowing and trusting and believing that God hears the heart's cry and the prayers of the ones that we lift up. So let us pray. Reigning Christ, King of Kings, host of hosts, we close this Christian year reminded that your kingdom is built on love and the whole world is your kingdom. God of promise, God of relationship, God of truth, hear our prayers for the world and communities. God of hope and joy, we turn our thoughts to your world, to your creation, to your people. As we witness the turning of the seasons, we give thanks. For the ones who are seeking hope, we pray for peace and turmoil. We pray for hope in despair. We pray for joy in pain. We pray for comfort in mourning. God of love, we pray for all, all those living in hope and th all those in pain. The ones who are lonely, the ones who are isolated, the ones who do not see the love that surrounds them, and the ones who strive day by day to bring your kingdom ever so closer. We pray for our country, our leaders, our workers, our communities, our church, and for all those who we hold dear. God of peace, we pray for ourselves that we may follow you more closely as the church year draws to a close. Show us your ways that others may find your peace in their hearts. For Linda, for Nathaniel, for the many folks who are named in our, our prayers in the bulletin, we pray, O oh God, that you heal and strengthen for the ones who are not named but are carrying anxiety and waiting for tests or absorbing test results or whatever it is that they're facing, we pray your peace, your healing, your comfort to surround, strengthen, and sustain each one. We thank you that you hear us. Hear us, Christ our King, as we bring our prayers said and unsaid in your holy name we pray together with one voice the prayer that your son taught the disciples in which we now pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn, number 66, To God Be the Glory. Stand as you are able to join in voice together. So here's the deal. We're called to be the light. But let's face it, sometimes we're like, my light's not very bright. I don't feel like it's very bright because I'm in that. I feel like I'm in a dark place. Do you ever feel that way? Right? So when we feel like we're in a dark place, that's what Isaiah is saying, is that he will protect your light from going out. And from being snuffed. It might get low, but there will be times when somebody can come alongside you and say, I'll shine my light to make your light just a little bit brighter so you can see your way through the dark. 
And then what happens is, is your light begins to shine brighter and then somebody else is like, well, I'm kind of feeling a little bit weary. And you see what's happening? We come alongside and we share our light. And one, and still, even if it's just a flicker of light, my friends, scripture, we heard it this morning, darkness, what? Cannot overcome it. So I share that because maybe you're thinking, I don't feel like I have a bright light. You don't need a bright light. You just need a light. And so take this light and the promise of God's light and love into the world and go share it or stand alongside someone who needs a little bit extra light or say, I need a little extra light over here, please. But as you go out sharing God's light and God's love, go with God's blessing because may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Oh.